Uranium, it's at a 16-year high right now, up 84% year-to-date when you look at the spot market. That's certainly one catalyst. So you read all that right. Congrats. Give us a sense. You. Are you going to ride this stock into next year as well? Absolutely, Frank. And again, thanks for having me. This is our top pick. Now, listen, a lot of the easy money has been made. Uranium prices have went from $20 now sitting at $90. Chemico stock has went from 8 to roughly 45 But here's why we see significant upside still, Frank. Um, so historically, right, 80 percent of the uranium market, the, con uh, the, the volume was contracting the spot market. But when you had Fukushima happen years ago and a lot of uranium capacity was taken offline, literally people were making uranium for $50. That was their cost, selling it for 20. They were selling it for a loss. So the market moved to, to contract markets. Now you have 80 percent of okay. the market in contract. Why is that important? That's important because now you have all these upcoming uranium mines. Uranium mines are now being sprouted across the world um, that now have reliable supply. Okay. So we believe because a lot of the market is in, the, uh, in contract versus spot, you're going to have a lot of new mines. And because of that, we think and the, the, the lack of supply, you're going to have prices go up even further. So we see further upside. Keep in mind. Yeah, you know, Gordon, to, to your point, at COP28, the U.S. and 20 other countries, they pledged the triple nuclear power by 2050. So, so you're right. It seems to be a long-term tailwind. All right, I want to shift gears. You gave us a great Q4 pick. Cameco, again, shares up 11% in Q4. What are you looking at as we go into next year? What's your pick going into next year? Yeah, so on the long side, we like Chemical, but on the short side, we like Sunrun, um, ticker RUN. Uh, we, we think that stock has significant downside. Very simply, you've had two recent upgrades by respectable firms, Goldman Sachs, Piper Sandler. They upgraded because the yield on the 10-year Treasury has come down. What they completely neglected, in our view, is the spreads. So when you talk about uh, pricing a bond, it's not just the yield on the Treasury, it's the spread the market demands for that bond. So that's the risk the market puts in. Spreads on basically solar ABS bonds have exploded. So it's actually more expensive now for these guys to issue debt versus where it was when the 10-year was much higher when it peaked. Okay. So our belief is that given that this company burns about just under a billion dollars of free cash flow a quarter, only has $600 million of cash on its balance sheet, we think they're going to have to come to market with either an equity or very dilutive debt issuance soon. Okay. We think when that happens, the stock resumes its downtrend. So, Gordon, let me play devil's advocate here for a minute. By the way, we did ask you for a new idea. You came to, the, to, to us with this shorting solar stocks idea before, but we're going to let you slide on this one. Um, I do want to ask you, you kind of have a contrarian call. You mentioned other, other, a number of other banks have upgraded the solar space and Sunrun in particular. So in your thesis, as rates continue to go down, they're expected to be multiple cuts next year. People will likely buy more houses. Won't that be a big tailwind for this business? Yeah, that's a good point. So if you look at actual home sales, we're looking at levels that we haven't seen, low levels that we haven't seen since the global financial crisis. So even though you've had mortgage rates come down, demand for houses is at levels that we've effectively never seen to the downside. So I think that's a negative. And again, People are demanding much higher yields on these solar bonds than other bonds. So the demand for the paper that they use to finance their business is just not there. So we think they're going to have to issue equity. They're going to dilute their shareholders. So we think these upgrades from these firms are dead wrong because they completely forgot to look at the spreads in doing those upgrades.